The first presenter is uh, Jose Echeverry from uh, York University in Toronto, and all I'll say about Jose is that Jose is one of the architects of the Green Energy and Green Economy Act of the province of Ontario that I have called the most progressive renewable energy policy in North America in three decades since Jerry Brown was first governor. Jose. I want to actually speak with you about why um, we need to pay attention to these things. I think we had a tremendous introduction to what can be done. So the question now is how we ensure that it happens. Uh, and I'm uh, from the country that is your friendly neighbor to the north. Um, and you may hear some things about us. Uh, you may notice I have an accent, that's okay. Um, and I have two titles for my presentation. That's the first one, that's the second one. Uh, and in the interest of time, I'm gonna keep it very, very brief. Um, so I'm not gonna tell you about uh, my university and all that jazz, because I have it here, if you're interested. Um, nor will I speak about uh, probably something that you hear a lot about in this country, which is uh, already uh, spoken, but it is one of the things that are locking the paradigm. Um, if, you, if we make fossil fuel commitments, we cannot do renewable energy commitments. It's as simple as that. Um, and that one, it's been discussed in your country. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to talk about bad policies at the moment because I want to leave it to the question and answer period, and that's why I need to be brief. But I do want to talk to you about nuclear power uh, because it's part of a Faustian bargain uh, that in North America it's coming back to hunt us. So as um, um, Paul said, uh, yes, uh, I come from Ontario. Uh, we did something revolutionary. We say no more coal, and coal will be gone as of the year 2014 by, uh, thank you. This is a fact, and how we do that is we say no more coal, and we chose a target and a timeline, uh, so it'll be out of the mix in 2014, and also we implemented good policy. Uh, feeding tariff policy embedded on a law called the Renewable Energy Green Energy Act. Um, we have feeding tariff programs. How many of you here in the audience know what a feeding tariff is? If you could lift your arm. Those of you that don't, please ask those that have uh, lifted your hand. Um, and this is what is happening in Ontario. So now people are getting together to build uh, wind facilities, to build solar facilities that look like this. That's a typical house uh, in uh, Toronto. This is a typical cottage in uh, uh, Ontario. Um, this is a typical commercial uh, installation, 250 kilowatts or so. This is happening so fast that I went to Google Earth to make a note of a building. Uh, and this is two days ago in Google Earth, and the building is that green field there. So Google Earth is saying it doesn't exist, well, yes, it does exist. It's Canada's first net zero building powered by photovoltaics, and it is there. That's not a figment of my imagination. It's Google Earth that it's wrong. No offense to Google if you're in the audience. Um, this is also the classical commercial photovoltaic installations that we're seeing. I like that one, rooftop solar done right. Uh, we're doing photovoltaics, uh, yes, we are, uh, and we have happy farmers, uh, these farmers greening because he has two crops, the corn on the back, the solar on the front, and the tractor he's thinking, soon I'll power it with plant oil. Uh, and that's why he's smiling. The biggest solar photovoltaic installations in North America are in Ontario, Canada. This is one of them, 90 megawatts. So when uh, you look at the people working, there's another big one. Uh, and here is our minister, former minister of energy, opening up this factory because we're actually manufacturing photovoltaic as we speak. These are uh, factories that are making photovoltaic. This is another factory. Okay, so now I wanna tell you what we have learned. The Faustian bargain. This was the Faustian bargain. The Ontario nuclear file. We say no to uh, nuclear and no to coal, but to get coal, we look the other way for nuclear, and now we are toast thanks to this. And I came here to San Francisco to solicit help. Uh, and I need help, and if you are in the position to help us, please talk to me on the break. This is what we have learned in Canada about nuclear. 
That sounds really good, by the way. That's a new official international atomic energy uh, sign for nuclear. Nuclear is too expensive. I, I'm not kidding. It's a joke. Uh, it's not a joke. Nuclear is too expensive, and if allowed to continue, it will stop renewable energy. All nuclear plants built in Canada have failed and have demanded massive, costly repairs. All nuclear plant repairs have ended costing much more than anticipated. Uh, always, it's the original, original budget times more. How much more? Let me just tell you how much more. Who pays? Guess who? We all do, every month. So what is happening here? I'm going to talk not about the plants in uh, Quebec and New Brunswick, but the ones in Ontario, which is where I live. So the Pickering Nuclear Power Plant, that's what it looks like. Uh, the original repair budget, they told us it's going to cost 1,300 million Canadian dollars, which is about the same as American dollars, they say. And they say the, rep the actual repair cost was 2,600 million dollars, okay? Then Bruce Nuclear Power Plant, the largest nuclear power plant in Canada, one of the largest in North America. Oh, we need to fix it. By the way, it's going to cost 2,750 million. Really? Yeah, you got to do it. Safety, safety, safety. Okay, let's do it. The actual repair cost, $4,800 million. Let that sink in for a second. Okay, the next one, Darlington Nuclear Power Plant. It didn't work either. Okay, so how much is it going to cost to repair it? Mm, we think about 6000 to $10,000 million. Really? Well, based on that, we don't know. Uh, and the big question is, should we allow this to happen? That's why I'm here uh, today, because we shouldn't, or at least we should talk about this. Here you can see our largest newspaper, the Toronto uh, Star. It's talking about these estimates. Here is the uh, outrage. You cannot see this, another newspaper article. But they just gave Ontario Power Generation. That is our entity that is owned by the people of Ontario to generate electricity, where the, uh, the people is, are the sole uh, shareholder of this. They gave $350 million for a contract to refurbish the Darlington Nuclear Station to a company called Alstom Power and Transport Canada. And then uh, this adds up to a billion already, as we speak today. And uh, they gave, as part of that billion, $600 million to a very shady company called SNC Lavalin. You may look it up. Uh, it's actually being sued in many countries for its shading deals. So there's also talk, let's build new nuclear power plants. What? Yeah, new nuclear plants. So what did it cost us the last nuclear plant that we built, the one that now we need to repair? The Darlington Nuclear Power Plant. Its original cost estimate was $3.95 billion. Or in other words, $3,950 million. The final cost was $14.4 billion. $14,400 million. I'm not kidding you. Look it up. Um, so, of course, there's no solution for radioactive waste. That didn't go away. The security concerns are still there. The weapons proliferation is still an issue. And uh, the advice is that the government should not repeat this huge mistake, or at the very least, the people should be consulting whether these expenses make any sense whatsoever. If you want to see the nuclear plant, that's what it looks like. This is our take with this right now. Uh, nuclear power, no thanks. Now, can it be? No thanks. And this is, I'll finish with this, Paul. Yes, it can. In Quebec, which is the province next door east of us, uh, they say, pas du tout. That's it, no more. And they closed their only nuclear power plant at the end of last year. And this you would want to clap about. Thank you, Quebec. Yay, <laughs> Quebec. This is the first North American nuclear power plant that I know that it's being closed by the people. The other people that are doing this are the Germans, and you'll hear from them shortly. What can you do? Uh, please write to our, uh, well, first analyze if what I told you makes sense to you. And if you can, write to our premier. She would love to receive a letter from you. She actually says so in her uh, uh, website. Please send me your ideas, questions, and concerns. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you. If you want her address, there it is. 
please do write to her. If you cannot read the uh, print, I can give you my PowerPoint so you can double check. And I'm gonna leave it at that because this is the Q&A part of the conversation. Thank you very much. I just want to add to uh, Jose's uh, education as a Canadian visiting California that California was the first place that, by a plebiscite of the people, closed a nuclear reactor in, near Sacramento Rancho. Rancho Seco, Sacramento Municipal Utility District, was the first to do so, followed by Quebec, of course. <laughs>